lesson today is lesson number 23. The theme is Come Down Before My Child Dies. And our reading is taken from John chapter 4, verse 43 to 54. John chapter 4, verse 43 to 54. And I will read. After the, after the two days had left, had left for Galilee, now Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his home country. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. Then they had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem and the Passover festival, for they were also there. Once more, he invited, he, he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay ill in Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The, the royal official said, sir, come down before my child dies. So Jesus replied, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on his way, his servants met him with the news that the boy was leaving. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized that this was the exact time when Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. This was the second sign, the second sign Jesus performed after coming from Judea in Galilee. As I have said, our theme is come down before my child dies. At this time, Jesus had just had a conversation with a Samaritan woman who became the first evangelist. And many Samaritans believed in Jesus after seeing what he had done. Then verse 43 begins with Jesus arriving in Galilee. The Galileans had witnessed what Jesus had done in Jerusalem at the Passover feast. Since they were all there, he had also visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned water into wine. An official son was lying there ill. When this official had heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee, he begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Sir, Calm down before my child dies. The guy continues to beg Jesus. Go, Jesus said, your son will live. On his way, his servant met him. And this servant told him, your son is living. This gentleman knew that his child was going to die. But now he's getting good news. He's being told that his child is living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, he discovered it was the time when Jesus had told him, your son will live. So he and his whole house believed in Jesus. What are we taking home this morning? When you invite Jesus, number one, when you invite Jesus in your life, situations are bound to change. This official heard that Jesus had come to Galilee and after inviting him, Jesus did not even go to his home, but he only spoke a word. So this gentleman's son was healed. 
and this his son was instantly healed. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. He has never changed. Whatever he did yesterday, he is able to do today. So we can trust in him because he can do it for us. He is a faithful God. Imagine this official insisted, come, come and heal my son. But Jesus did not even go to his house. He only spoke a word. So once you invite Jesus in your house, once you invite Jesus in your life, you will have better things in mind. You will have good things in your house. Things will happen. Jesus will change situations in your life. This situation, this boy was about to die, but the situation changed immediately. Immediately Jesus spoke a word, the situation changed. Point number two, faith can move mountains. The official had faith in Jesus and he believed that Jesus was able to heal his son. The same time Jesus said, your son will live is the time when the boy got better. The official persisted, come, come, heal my son. He knew that when Jesus comes or whatever Jesus was going to do, his son will be healed. And that is exactly what happened. So we must have faith in Jesus in our day-to-day -day life, in the challenges that we have, we only need to have faith. We only need to trust in Him. We have challenges. We have many things troubling us. And Jesus is ready. He is ready to do anything for us. So as we continue in this Lenten period, what is it that is troubling you? Where are you suffering? Where are you hurting? Just invite Jesus and again, have faith in him. And when you have faith in him, you are sure he is going to do something for you. Number three, confession by mouth. Whatever your mouth speaks is what happens. This official said, Come down before my son dies. Come down before my son dies. And we see that Jesus did not even go down, but he only spoke a word. But because of the confession of his mouth that come down before my son dies, he received very positive answer. His son was instantly healed because of what Jesus said. So we need to confess positively in everything that we want, in whatever thing that is troubling us, any problem, any challenge, our confessions are very important. First, it must come from you. It must come from your heart. Whatever comes out of your heart, your mouth is what is in your heart. So when you confess positively. Things will happen positively. Go, Jesus told him, your son will live. And the boy was instantly healed. As Christians, we need to have faith. We must trust in the Lord. This morning, I don't know your challenge. I don't know your trouble. But Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 that brings in my third point. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Every time you trust in the Lord, he will do it for you. You only have to trust him. You only have to hold on to him. You only have to lean on him. So even as we continue Fasting in this Lent period, who are you trusting? Are you trusting in God or you're trusting in man? If you're trusting in man, you're born to fail. But if you're trusting in God, he will no, never leave you. He will never forsake you. So let us continue to trust in 
the Lord, even as we continue to fast, we must hold on to our God. We must trust in our God. We must lean on him. We must depend on him and he will make our path straight. So my point number four, the promises of God are yea and amen. When Jesus promised your son will live, this gentleman started going home. And on his way, he meets his servant and his servant tells him, your boy, your, your son is living. Your son has already gotten better. The boy was instantly healed. God never lies. His promises are yea and amen. Whatever he says happens. He never cheats. He says the truth. So when we call on him, he will answer. In Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you great and mighty things that you do not know. When we call on Jesus, the gentleman, this official called on Jesus, come, come and heal my side. And when we call, he answers and he was answered instantly. His son was healed. So in our day-to-day -day challenges, we need to trust in God. We need to call on him. We need to hold on to him. We must know that he is able. We must know that he is faithful. We must know that he can always do it for us. But we have our part to play and he has his part to play. So let us play our part and he will play his part. So this morning, whatever it is that is troubling you, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you for your word. We bless your holy name for teaching us this morning to trust in you. We bless your name for teaching us to hold on to you and to call on you because you always answer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because when we call, you answer. It is you who answers by fire. Thank you, Lord, because your ear is open to our cry. And every time you call, you are ready and your hand is long enough to save us. We bless you because we trust in you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe.